So he, he does turn, he, he inevitably does turn into, like, not only be a, a combination of, like, Lex, Lex and Superman, but also, like, the, the thing that corrupts him is, is a kind of Batman's, uh, philosophies. <laughs> Which is, like, that's kind of, kind of trust a Batman. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, everything's cool, because I'm doing it. Breaking people's legs, <laughs> I'm, it's only cool, because I'm doing it. <laughs> Oh man, that's that's a good one. Um, I will attempt to follow that up with my pitch. Um, I'm I'm interested. You, what what was it called again? Oh, let me see if I remember the name. I was like, um, the, I think it's called the when the gods are watching or the gods are watching, when the god is watching. I think that's why I named it or whatever. Um, but yeah, so like the concept of this pitch is kind of simple and stuff like that. And this this whole comic is just a one shot. I don't think this has like legs to be uh super super long um i think it's just like a one shot would be like get its meshes across um kind of and like the idea i want to like kind of like think about it or talk about is like uh what do you do if like superman harasses you right because like um pretty much I, I was like putting it in this perspective like um if you ever been like um watch any videos of like you know um cops like pulling you over or whatever or like abusing their powers or whatever um in the, the micro right like in the moment you can say whatever you want you can bring up any law you want but effectively you are powerless right you are powerless to this person that is either going to do the right thing or not or apply the law the law the right way or not right um and them applying the right the law correctly or not can like really affect your life right um and you're kind of at that person's mercy and it's got it's kind of super scary and it's kind of like always a thing that at least i have a the back back in my mind is like you can you can point out logs and stuff like that but if like you have someone that's just unreasonable um that doesn't really matter right um but like the 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 back side of that is there's re re uh re repercussions with that right like you know if someone did something extremely fucked up or like um pulled you over and like stop and frisk you like if you have it recorded, if you have it documented, um, you can get it out to the inf to the uh, to the to the media and to information, and then people can like that person can get his due justice, right? They can we can find them, we can charge them, we can make sure this stuff happens, and we can make the system better, right? Like we can slowly weed out these people and slowly like uh, make a more like uh, stronger system that people can trust, right? Because like you know, um, if that happens, people don't trust the system, right? But what if that happens with Superman? Right, like, no one's gonna be able to stop him. Right, no one's going to uh, to think like, what law would you if 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 Superman told you to show you sh told you to uh, show your ID, um, would you be like, hey, that's not legal, <laughs> right? And then like, who's like, wh like, would he ever get any re repercussions for like like uh trampling over your rights or whatever? Um, that is super in interesting. Real quick. I just want to say when you said like what do you ask what if superman's harassing you i i imagine like superman like cat calling <laughs> some uh, cat, the, cat calling woman or something i was like is this is this where he's going if i is this where this is I, going? I think that's a super interesting thing too like uh but that's a that's i don't think i have the 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 intelligence for that story if that makes sense i, I think someone else can um probably make a story better along those lines but yeah so yeah, that's um the idea of it. So like this this is this a one shot and this story focuses on this kid named Warren Price, right? Or Wardy Price, sorry. Wardy Price. Um he's this like um black kid who is like 16 um and he lives in this place called uh let me let me see if I can find the name. Uh he lives in this place called Rule Point. Um and Rule Point is this like kind of city that is like halfway between uh, Metropolis and Gotham, right? And like, if you had to like make a distance, like uh, a rule point is like 45 minutes away from Metropolis and like 30 minute, uh, minutes away from Gotham. And it's a really weird place. Um, it is like more associated with like uh, Gotham's like a uh, CD side, right? Like when you think of like rule place, you think of more like, or oh, you're getting into Gotham, like, you, you know, you're probably going to those zones that you probably need to know someone there, or you probably don't want to go or whatever. Um, but like, this is kind of where rule point is like, like, it's not like a super great place, but it's not terrible. There's like regular businesses and regular people there too. But there's also like a 
a, more of a, 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 a poor side. Like, uh, if you would have to think about it, like, if you think of rule point, it would be connected to the poor side of Gotham. And then on the other side of the poor side of Gotham, that's like the, the side of Gotham that is like more rich, more city like, if that makes sense. Um, it's like the city right next to that poor side. I just think of um that song "Welcome to Cleveland." <laughs> have, you, have you seen that? It's just like this is like the Cleveland of like Metropolis and Gotham, where they're like their ad song would be like, "At least we're not Detroit," <laughs> yeah. but it would be. I'm I'm gonna put that I'm gonna put that in there, <laughs> but instead of like Detroit, it's just like at least we're not Gotham. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's it's very much and like even like the city is kind of built out where it's like it was like this this place that was trying to be um metropolis but fail it was like it was like Gotham. this the rule point was like trying to be metropolis but fail so there's like a lot of infrastructure that is not that great or doesn't work at all right so um some of the infrastructure like are just straight up abandoned so like there's like railroads there's like um there's subways there's like buildings that are even like completely abandoned because people just kind of gave up on it um it's it's a very like this is kind of a city, but there's some bad art. There's some there's some land that can't be sold because of like you know it's just it's just condemned and it takes too much to fix. So it's a very weird place. But the other thing about this place is, um, this is place is also kind of known as a way a place where villains um do a lot of like recruitment. So like um a lot of the young kids or here or whatever or like a lot of the older generations um there's like these recruiters from like. Um, different type of gangs that are like from these bigger vans like the jokers like um like um from for poison ivy for like penguin that come to this these like these outer cities and just talk to young people and and like promise some stuff um and uh, the way this works and why it works so well is because like a lot of the things that they're offering are pretty amazing right like they, they're very like cult like in a in a way where it's like they offer like hey you know did your friend just die um, join, join Raza Gruel. We'll, 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 we'll give you the power of immortality or like, Hey, you can, you can help research with Dr. Free, help freeze find the research to bring back his wife. And if he brings back his wife, we'll, we'll make sure you can bring back someone else. Right. So they're, they're like, so they're like, they're like army recruiters. Kind of. Yeah. They're, they're very like persuasive. They're not like, this is like did all on the download, but like the, a lot of the things they promise are like, they, I, I think the way I phrased it was like, these recruiters are very like um we we find the right people at the right time and offer them the right ideals right and this is like uh i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna make another person that's like kind of like uh the, the main guy that like runs this organization for for villains where it's like hey if you need recruitment if you need p people if you need bodies we'll get it for you or whatever but like um there's this group of people that do that that like are paid a lot of money to get like henchmen for these villains organizations or these these uh gangs and stuff like that um, and a lot of times it's like, hey, you know, um, Dr. Freeze is working on this thing to bring back some people from the dead. I can get to Ra's al Ghul gives you like immortality. Um, Bane gives you um, an offshoot of his venom. Um, and that leads into another thing where um, Bane has like, like three different venoms. Like one is like the one that he uses for his strength. One is like a pretty much a, a, a drug that's like a, that dilates time. Like it's a, it's like a dilating time drug that like, it's like, on the streets and it's like starting to become a problem um and the other one is like like a like a like a like a smaller version or a smaller dose of his type of um his things and it's like it's very common thing for like hey if you join this gang you get some of this you you uh you uh you are uh you have this abilities and this power and this um or or something like that so they always they normally offers like some type of like riches powers or like uh some type of protection Right. And like a lot of people kind of take into this part. So this, this like rule point is a very interesting space where there's like a lot of like activity in it, but like none of it is like, I'm illegal yet. Right. It's all just like, like getting people bodies together so you can go do like bad things. So this is the other reason why it's not known as like a great place. Cause like those, those, it's those guys there. Another thing that these, these guys say is a lot is like superheroes don't care about you. Right. Like, so even if you get caught, like you'll be fine, right? They're not gonna kill you. They're just gonna maybe lock you up. If you just want run fast enough, they, they probably don't even know you would exist, right? They're all too focused on like the um the main bad guy or whatever. So it's like, hey, it's low risk for you. Just jump on, you'll make money, blah, 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 right? Um, 
So that's another thing that happens in Rule Point. So that's kind of like the setting of where of like Wardy's life or whatever. And one other thing I might have mentioned before we get into like the one shot is uh in this world, superheroes are strong, like super strong. Like the people that are willing to go against them are kind of crazy. Like the idea of like fighting Superman is like the same idea of like I'm gonna punch a nuke, right? Um, the idea of even like doing that is just kind of like out there. Um, so like Joker, uh, um, like, uh, all these people that go up against, against Superman feels very, very dangerous, right? Like, um, these, these, these superheroes feel like they never get hurt. They feel very much like gods, um, in, in a very real way. And they have followings like that, right? Like a lot of people are just fans of Superman, but a lot of people are also zealots of Superman. Um, and you, you get, you're kind of see ever since superheroes and like villains has popping up. Um, this is like true for not just superheroes, but for villains as well, where it's like, you get these kind of zealots for a villain or superhero or whatever. It's, it's like idol culture for, for, for superheroes and villains. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Like, so I was, I want to say between, between a fight between, between Batman stands and um, BTS stands, who'd win? Hey man, I, I don't even need to think about that twice. Those BTS friends scared me, so I'm gonna go with that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's the setting, right? So all this starts off. Um, um, Warren is just doing his regular routine. He's he catches like 45 minute bus to Metropolis. You know, doing his like his his uh his uh his tran like his crossovers, going to other buses, going to metros, getting to his job, and little does Worthy know, Worthy. Sorry, I keep messing up his name. His name's Warding or Worthy, whichever one I feel like at the time. This is probably gonna be one of the worst days of his life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he pretty much goes to work. Um, like many other people that from Rural Point and from Golfin or from that area, or whatever, they either normally bus down to Metropolis City, work there, get some cash, come back home. Or they uh, go into the middle of like the other side, the other side, like the good side of uh, of Gotham City, work over there, um, get the money, come back, you know, same old same. Maybe like a forty five minute commute at max when like there's good traffic or whatever, right? And so he's doing his main routine. He's he's having a tough day at work. Things fine, and then he, like he's finishing up his day. He got a he had like a, the early day also. He's 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 done by twelve or whatever, and he uh. Gets on this bus and you know just like listen to music. What would he be listening to? Probably some Childish Gambino. He's listening to Childish Gambino. Uh, he's listening to Outside and just uh, relaxing or whatever. And suddenly the bus like stops, and he's like, you know, that happens, you know, traffic or whatever, blah 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 blah. And then there's like a a big, really big rise of like, oh my gosh, and like people's like taking out the cameras and like acting all crazy and stuff like that. And it was like, a, you could hear a guy in the back of says, I love you, man. <laughs> um, and all this other stuff. And like, what he's like, oh, it's probably like, you know, one of the superheroes like flying over, you know, this is kind of a common occurrence of like, you know, um, people getting really excited when he's seeing the Superman, it's like seeing Superman or seeing like any type of hero. So he's like just on his phone. And then uh, he noticed like the, the sound kind of gets really silent and loud. And like, he's like, what the fuck's going on? And he just takes out his headphones and looks to the side of him. And right next to him is Superman. And he's like, holy Superman. Shit, right? And you know, for for like uh someone like like uh Wardy, it's really weird. Like he he he's not a big fan of Superman, like he doesn't really care about him. He just you know, just trying to stay out of his way, trying to like just live his life and do his thing or whatever, right? And like the first thing Superman was like, Hello, like hello young sir, or whatever. Hey, I need to talk to you. Um I need you to step off the box and we need to have a conversation. <laughs> and Wordy was like, uh, this is like the only bus home. Like, can this, is this like, uh, like, what is this? Like, can I stay on the bus with people? And shit like that. <laughs> uh, and, and, uh, and Wordy, Superman's pretty adamant of being like, Hey, you need to come off this bus now. And, and like, and he, he puts out like those, like, you know, when people like put out a vague thing, it's like, Hey, you need to listen to me, right? You need to listen to me and you need to come off the bus. And like, at first 
like the the crowd that was there was like very like just enamored with Superman, and now they're kind of getting annoyed with uh with uh with thing with just being like not just listening to him. It's like oh just listen to him. Stop stop thing. You need to get off the bus. Did you do something wrong? Is he a criminal, Superman, or whatever? <laughs> if you don't have to, if you have nothing to worry about, just get off the yeah, bus. Yeah, it was like, it was like, fuck, bro. So he's like, uh, he's like very nervous. Um, I'm glad what you're saying because that's what Superman says. He's like, hey, man, I can see heartbeats. And it's obviously that you're hiding something from me because the way you're acting, right? And, and like, 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 uh, 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 it, it, it like, uh, in Wordy's hand, he's like, yeah, no, because you're Superman, right? Like, I don't want to be next to you, right? Like, like, I, I hate this. Like, it, like, I'm super nervous already. Like, I, I, I don't like any of this. And he's like, I know you're hiding something. Come off the bus. We don't need to talk about it. So pretty much he, he gives, he comes off this bus and he's like outside with Superman. He's like, we're going to go to a place that is like more uh, private. So, you know, he just picks him up by the collar and just flies off. Like he just flies to like one of like the one of the higher buildings and stuff like that to like get away from the people that are watching this like interaction, right? <laughs> and Wordy is like just finds out, you know, just figures out he learns that he is uh, terrified of heights, and just starts freaking the fuck out and all this other shit. And he gets on a building and he's having this conversation with Superman. But pretty much what this this conversation is, is it's like Superman's like, "Hey, I know you know what's going on. I need you to tell me what's going on. Just like life's on our stake." And I know you're hiding something. I don't know exactly what you're hiding, but I know you're hiding something. And it's just like this kind of long drawn out conversation about like saying like, I don't know, bro. I don't know what you think. I don't have anything to hide. Like, and like, um, like Superman asks him like, who are you? Like, what is your, uh, like, where do you live? And all this other stuff. And like, where he's kind of like, kind of resistant, but like Superman's like, oh, that's fine. He just like takes a picture of him and he sends it somewhere. And he's like, so you're, 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 you're price worthy, right? Um, and he like has all this information about him, right? And he was like, he's like, well, like he, um, Superman gets like a like a like a call when he's doing this thing. It's getting kind of a little bit more heated, and Superman gets like his call, and um, where he probably just kind of like trying to like trying to be nice to like not upset this person. Like he's trying to comply, but he doesn't know exactly how to like comply in the right way to get out of him. And he doesn't want to lie because like every time he, he says like a, a blatant lie, Superman just calls him out on it. So he's like, he's like, well, maybe it was like Joe from like the, the, the store that I worked at. And he's like, Joe, do you, I know it's not Joe. What you call it? He lives in this other thing. You're obviously lying to me. This is why we're having this whole conversation, all this other stuff. Right. Um, but Superman gets called. He says, all right, I'm going to be back. I'm going to be watching you. Uh, uh, don't, don't, don't forget what I said. So he, he pulls him off the building, drops him down and he flies away. So Wordy is shook, right? man i don't know what to do right and he's like i don't know anything this is talking about or whatever so he's just like i'm just glad this is over and I, i'm sure this won't this won't continue or continue to work to like to uh to bother my life or whatever right so he gets a tab he pays extra money he makes it back home and like as soon as he gets back into like rural city the taxi driver just immediately stops and he's like why are you stopping for like this is like you know like still like a two three miles away from my house and and guess who's there? It's Superman. <laughs> and um, he like he's like, hey, the tax tells the tax guy, he's like, yeah, hey, you gotta let this guy out. He's a he's, he's a person of interest, <laughs> uh, or whatever. Superman pretty much like um, get, um makes a word to get out of the car or whatever. And we're having this like this conversation again. And uh, pretty much this is more of like just a walking conversation. And Superman is like asking him stuff and asking him why he's being so hesitant. Why doesn't he trust us? Like. I am, I am the man of hope. I am the man of um, truth and justice. Like you should just bear your soul to me. Like I am going to like protect you and everyone else. And like Wardy kind of gives them, gives them like a pushback where he says like, Hey, like you don't ever step out of Metropolis. Um, this is probably the first time you've ever been to rural city. Like you rural point, right? Like you, you don't know anything about me. You don't know anything a thing. And he's like, no, I do know all this stuff. Like I know you, you go to school here. I know you're um, blah, 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 this and all of this. And they just keep walking, right? What Superman's plan is is to like get to his house and pretty much like um, tell his parents that uh, like you know he's involved in this crazy thing and he's lying and he's hoping like his parents can help him um, um, like uh, um, get the kid to tell him what he wants because he because he, he knows he's like sixteen and underage and he and he and all this other stuff, right? And pretty much they walk about like three miles and they get to a bench 
and then you sit down and like superman's like a little bit confused or whatever and he's like you know your house is like like just over there there's a block over there or whatever and like why aren't you going home like aren't you are you scared of like you know the consequences or whatever of your actions or whatever and like again um what he's protesting his injuries and he's like bro i'm, I'm what you call a uh a involuntary nomad um <laughs> and like uh pretty much he's trying to say is like yo he's homeless right he's a pretty much effectively homeless um because like that home that home that uh superman has on record is condemned the way price has been like living is pretty much um living with friends and family some days and like just like switching out between houses and stuff like that so like the people in the community know him and they take him in sometimes but like sometimes he he doesn't have a place to stay and he you know lives outside he's, he's effectively homeless pretty much but he's he still has like enough connections to like get him food keep him relatively uh like active in like school and like going to work or whatever and slowly like building himself up um so he can like go to like some other situation right so this kind of comes to a surprise at superman because like you know like you were saying like earlier with your rendition of superman like superman doesn't have to deal with these like moral gray areas right like um this kid is not gonna listen to him he he's not telling him the information he wants and he has no one else to like appeal to or whatever and like super, this is like the first time superman actually has to like microly deal with someone that is in like a bad spot and has no reason to trust superman at all right in his city people trust him all the time and now he's at rule point like no one does and all the while while all this is happening Wardy's like saying like fuck, superman, fuck, superman, fuck, superman. why is superman follow me in my city especially with all the people around here right so like like i said earlier this town is kind of known for like villain recruitment kind of um this might not be apparent to to superman or whatever but like people are like saying like why is wordy with superman and this is kind of concerning right um because like you know wordy lives there and superman doesn't and i, I and wordy knows as soon as like superman's gone there's gonna be a ton of people coming up to him and ask him a lot of questions and some of the questions he doesn't even want to be involved with right um so pretty much this whole thing happens and Superman kind of like loses it a little bit. And he's just pretty much just straight up threatens the kid and be like, um, he flies him up super high and says like, Hey, um, lives are at stake. Um, you need to, you need to tell me what's going on. And like, like again, word, he's like saying like anything and everything just to like get out the situation. And he just, and then Superman like drops him. And like, this is like, you know, like very like close to the, um, um, like higher atmosphere, right? Like, this they like he's just falling like like hundreds and hundreds of feet right and he's freaking out or whatever and like in the classic superman way he's he like stops him like wait he stops him like a foot off the ground and like this uh forever is going to be burned into like a wordy's mind of like this incident like like where he he almost pretty much died for for no reason because he still doesn't know what superman's talking about at the end of the day superman kind of says like all right, you're obviously not going to tell me. I'm going to keep an eye on you, blah, 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 blah. And he flies off, right? So after today, you know, it's all very traumatic for uh, Worthy. He, 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 he's just like kind of in his head. He's kind of freaking the fuck out. He's under, he's like, why does Superman think I'm involved in any of this? Superman. I just go to work and go home. Or I, I go to work and then go back to my bench uh, or whatever. And he pretty much like talks to one of his friends about it and one of her friends pretty much like uh let him bum, bum a place to stay for like the night or whatever and like at this point um throughout this comic this 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 uh this comic has been keeping tr track of like the time of day or whatever and like right before like at, at 11 30 uh wordy's like asleep he's like sleeping on the couch or whatever and then suddenly the lights come on and like um his friend throws his bag at him he's like yo you gotta go you gotta bounce and he's like, yo, bro, what's what's going on? Like, we've been friends for a while. Like, why is this happening? Like, you know, I'm no trouble. I just, I just, you know, I just do my stuff. I'm just trying to, like, you know, find a place to stay, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, you, have you seen the news, my man? Have you seen what people are saying about you or whatever? And he's like, bro, what are you talking about? You're acting funny or whatever, um, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, oh, just watch this stuff. And he brings up this video. And, like, and then, um, like, right before this moment, it's like, this is the moment that that wardy figured out that this is the worst day of his life and um in this video yeah so in, in this video it's like superman is like uh at this podium and he's like doing a speech pretty much to uh, metro metropolis city and pretty much what has been going on is like there is this new um um bullet 
that just kills superheroes just straight up mercs them right um it, it is super effective it has pretty much killed um, Wonder Woman and has killed like um like three low leveled uh superheroes just straight up, right? It's it's like super, people don't know very much about it, and it's like this like this whole like uh MacGuffin thing that like Batman doesn't know anything about it, Superman doesn't know anything about it, that it always exists and they know it's being produced and they they recently confiscated like crates full of this like this this new ammunition that can really like mess up superheroes. In rural city, and they 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 found like another another pack in golf, and now like um um this is like a, a very big thing, and Superman says like hey, um I need to to I need to work with law enforcement and everyone else to uh make sure the city stays safe not just for heroes but for you guys too, so I need you guys to t to point out any suspicious people to me. We already have someone on our list, and I'm working with law enforcement to um have him have him detain and like force him to tell him information because we know that he knows the information and he is responsible he's at least partly responsible for the deaths of these superheroes these beloved superheroes and the injury of, of wonder woman right and and like like they, they have this whole conference and it's like and what he's like 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 bro like what is this talking about he's like and then some like interview came up the interview came up well, i'll make the interview i'll name the interview it was it was lois lane lois lane comes up it's like who's the suspect like who's this person so we can like find him and stop him he's like we're gonna detain him soon and his name is warren price and for, and then like one moment you just see warren price drop his phone like kind of like just slump pick up his bag and then start running <laughs> so like that is just generally the idea just saying like um the idea is just like what if Superman was just super convinced that you were the you were the guy, and um, like there's no real ability to fight that? I don't think I uh, grabbed all the stuff I want to, but I, I do think this would be a kind of kind of an interesting one shot. But I think like it might need some better writing. <laughs> one of the things that has made it very clear to me, it my my hunch was right. Writing any type of Superman um comic book or whatever is super hard because Superman's a hard character to write for. But I think this is like an interesting perspective that doesn't like really focus on Superman. It's kind of focused on like the power Superman has. It's kind of unbelievable. And if anyone goes against his power, it's like you're so fucked in like so many ways before even him like fighting you, right? Like like he has people on his side. He has pretty much the whole police department definitely in uh, Metro City on his side, right? And anyone that like goes against it, it's almost 100% wrong um, com like publicly to everyone else. Yeah, yeah, that's my pitch. Wow. What wow. Wow, man. That was really good. That was really, really good. <laughs> I I'm over like I, I feel like you're 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 like you're playing when you're like, oh man, it's not fully it wasn't it's not that fully developed. Like that that thing was that was a comic story and <laughs> pitch right there. That what you just did was like some straight comic story and did not pause, <laughs> did not like question yourself at all, just went through the whole did, like you went from from plot point fully fleshed through the whole, every sort of beat on there like that was that was perfect what what are you what are you even talking about <laughs> bro i was i was scared halfway i was like that would make sense whatever i'm just gonna keep going i'm just gonna keep talking and hopefully it makes sense uh that made perfect sense but yeah so like i think i think that is like a a very interesting thing where um and i think like that i think that's the very the the story or the one shot i'd be interested for someone to write or or animate or whatever where it's like like you know like there's no power higher than Superman, so like his his judgment, um, um, can like really destroy people's lives, and like you know there's you could see that in um, like a microcosm a lot of places just like looking at like police arrests and like um pullovers and stuff like that where like you know people abuse their power especially when they think they're right. I think it could be a whole series. I I, I think I think if it's a mini series, it has to be like at least six six chapters long do you, do you think so maybe maybe 10 i think it yeah I what mean, do you think like what do you like my thing is like what do you think comes after like this like do you like i don't know where where to go after this pretty much like after like worthy is like kind of conflicted with like i'm against superman and and the police department uh i don't i, I didn't see his life getting fucked pretty much <laughs> well at first the, i think the the hardest part which is i, I don't know if you were thinking about like how does a normal person deal with having Superman and possibly all all the other 
remaining villains of the Justice League coming after them? How does he deal with having all that against him? Um, and that would definitely be a difficult thing. I, I can see why you ended it where you ended it. I think ending it there is, is perfect as well. Um, I, what you could also do, like, what I thought, like, what I kind of wanted to happen is, like, right when they found that out, like, Batman comes in <laughs> swinging through the house and, like, breaks the glass. It's just like, it's just like, where are they? That is actually really good. That's actually probably a little bit better of an ending. <laughs> but I think what, like, what should, what should happen is, like, whoever is, like, in charge of making this bullet thing is also, at the same time, also, like, hunting down these villains at the same, or these superheroes at the same time. So you end up in a lot of these like MacGuffin moments where like, like in this case, like Batman is just like basically like torture the information, whatever he's trying to get out of, out of, um, is the dude's name worthy? Is it worthy or is it Morty? Um, I think it's worthy. Um, I'm going with worthy. Wor- We're going to go with that, even though I've been, I've messed up a whole bunch of times. <laughs> no, I think he said worthy. Um, uh, is, is like, he's like, you know, about to like really dig in on worthy. And then just like, all you hear is, he just slumps over and there's like a bullet through his head. You all hear is like, Ba-dunk! he just falls down yeah. and they're like, yo, was that one of those magic bullets? And they like, they look through, there's like a, a person who picks it up or they find out later, like with the, um, with the, um, like the medical autop- autopsy comes through is like, nah, this is a regular bullet. <laughs> yeah. This is a regular bullet. <laughs> like, like, yeah. And, and like, um, I guess like if it, if it did get involved, I would really like, uh, probably lean into like the, uh, like if if there is a bullet that can like kill superheroes, I would lead into like there's so many villains that are perfect to assassinate like pretty much all superheroes or villains or whatever. So I think like if if this did continue, I think you have to bring in like Deathstroke, um, like as a person yeah. that's like one of these people that is are knocking out villains or whatever. And maybe there's like a maybe like um Red Hood is like doing the opposite to villains. Um where he's getting this ammunition too when he's using it to take out like really strong villains as well. Yeah. It could be like who, who is it? Do we know if it is a dead shot? Is it death stroke? Is it um I'm gonna, is it like it's Vlad. Vlad from, from from the right team Titans. From from who? From the right team Titans. The only one that's correct. You said Vlad? Vlad from the right right team Titans. I don't remember that one, Vlad. Um they didn't call him Vlad or Deathstroke. I'm pretty sure they call him Vlad in um, Teen Titans. Oh, you're talking about Sl- you're talking about Slade. Oh, Slade, yeah. I fucked that one up. Yeah, yeah, Slade. <laughs> Bring it back, Slade. <laughs> or is it? Yeah, like they don't know if it's that those characters. If it's like the um, I don't... what's the name of Idris Elba's character oh. in in Suicide Squad? Oh, uh, fuck. Let me look it up real quick. Was it like Bl- Bloodsport? Yeah, I think it's Bloodsport. Is it? Is it? I don't know if it's, it's not the dude. Is it like Sportsmaster with a gun? Is it? It could be like so many other, uh, so many different people. Is it? Is it Green Arrow? Yeah. Could it be Green Arrow? Yeah, like, like, yeah. And, or, or Arsenal? Yeah, and I, I think that's what makes it very interesting. Where it's like, um, if we did compare it to it, it's just like, hey, you know, superheroes finally feel like as much danger, um, about like getting involved in situations or just showing their face as like I guess regular people feel, pretty immediately. Yeah, and you could go in the way like how you're going where it's still very like low level low violence or you could like if you wanted to r- ratchet up the tension you could be like if if in those situations where like were they is there when like these 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 heroes are getting knocked off while they're looking for him like it just it he becomes more and more at blame yeah. like people people are more <laughs> and more suspicious of him yeah like, i think that's the key of this situation like were they a lot of the um the uh like the initial thing and that happens it's just suspicion from superman and it keeps spurring it on and then but as more stuff happens like wordy is not a part of any of this like this is all circumstances that like superman kind of thought this um uh, maybe he has like some other reasoning or whatever but like whatever reasoning he has it's wrong like su- like wordy is not a part of this it's just everyone else is dragging him into it yeah oh, man that, that is such an interesting plot who who did you, at the time have you figured out who is behind I'm it. not you don't have to say it out now oh no I, I, I haven't i haven't um thought about that i, I just thought like there's someone else that's to deal with it. it's like wordy is just literally just a guy right it, it's a focus on him for some reason <laughs> don't have like a uh, uh a, a person that's behind it if it is a person that's behind it i probably would want it to be like a newer character or someone that's kind of made up and they like and they're like um and hiring these assassins when you did this that scene about like uh with 
Superman at the press conference, it really reminded me of, it, it seemed like very much like a, a post-Patriot Act, like 9-11 sort of like tensions where you have these characters who were like, who were like this symbol for justice, like and now we are like willing to do anything we, we have to to gather the same sort of information for the safety of like, of our friends and, and just the general public. And then you have like Superman who is like not a character who is not used to like who's used to people entrusting him now having to fall back on like of other tactics that he's not as fully well aware of to persuade people, which just turns into intimidation. Yeah. When Superman's not using hope and ideals and stuff, like his only fallback on is usually violence and intimidation. <laughs> yeah, which is scary for someone that literally could lift infinity, right? Um yeah. And like, I, I think, yeah, I think like, uh, I want the story to at least, if, if, if this story ever became a one shot or whatever, I really wanted to feel like, um, a lot of like bad things are like paved off of like good intentions. You know what I'm trying to say? Like mm -hmm. people have like these intentions to do good, but like a lot of bad stuff, um, comes out of that, those intentions. I think, well, I don't know if you could put this in there, but I think like what it inevitably brings up a lot of, it brings up like a, a conversation about like a lot of like the te techniques the uh, superheroes use in movies to like get a information out of like specifically like how you describe like that sort of iconic I'm a superhero I'm gonna drop you from a height and <laughs> tell you tell me what I need to know and usually in those situations like they are right but like while you're talking about it like uh when Superman drops him down from the from like that height that you're talking about up in the stratosphere. And having it be like for minutes and, and seconds, I was just thinking like, man, what's the difference between this and waterboarding? Because like both of them, they are terrible, very terrible like fear tactics, and then they're also like they keep you alive. You don't, you can't technically die. Yeah, yeah and this is very like, yeah, it's very like, it's very like, 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 like the only reason this is allowed and people like it or whatever, you get away with get away with the stories because like the the hero is right, like the hero is doing the right thing, right? But like what if they're wrong like what if they just the, that one mistake is like this person's not the guy bro he's just not the guy <laughs> uh second thing I, this isn't like it's more of like uh this isn't like a real suggestion it was just something i was i was thinking that would have been interesting is he, what you're talking about superman uses uses his like uh his like vision to tell if, if you're lying based on your heartbeat yeah i think it would be interesting if the way he the technique that he uses to tell if you're lying is based on like lie detector Ooh, techniques yeah and we've had that yeah we've had that conversation like 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 lie detectors aren't necessarily actually accurate yeah, like yeah they're, they're they're kind of just a tool to like to manipulate you into confessing yeah, yeah a, lot they, of, they're, a lot of ways at least in, at least in my opinion they're way more of a tool to be like hey like you, you should tell the truth it's like it's, it's like it's like a very like you know, when someone pulls you in and they, they rely on your, like, your religious uh, background to tell the truth, right? It's like, you know, Jesus won't let this. It's very, like, <laughs> they're hoping you say more truthfully because you're feeling the pressure. But, like, the, the system itself is not necessarily active, accurate. Uh, the other thing I had was, like, a, a question I had about the phone, that, that scene where he takes out, where Superman's able to gather information on Worthy with with his phone one i thought it'd be i don't think it's a really interesting idea if like superman takes out a phone uh, i don't know why that's just really <laughs> funny to me but is his phone like patched up with like batman's uh yeah computer? i think that's what i was trying to uh, get at like uh he is patched up with it batman's like computer so pretty much like i kind of want to give the feeling like they can do a stop and identify pretty much for free which is like in a lot of states are illegal some states it's legal in to do or whatever but like He's literally advising on um, Wardy's rights the minute he does that, right? He forces him himself to uh, forcing him to identify himself, even even though he hasn't done anything. Hmm. Like he's not in a car, he's not in a car or anything like that. It's like very like, I want you to know more information about you just because you <laughs> look suspicious. Hmm. No, I th I think that's super interesting. Do I have anything else? Uh, the only other thing I had, and, and you kind of like, I think made it a little more interesting by making him homeless is that if uh there was a scene where worthy like gave him an address like hey this is where i need to be stopped off at like this is the taxis at or whatever and he's like yo it's the one by the the donut shop on on like spring street he's like or, uh, like are you sh like oh yeah or, it's it's the one on like the street next to like um the the coffee shop and, th and then like Worthy's like no i'm pretty sure it's the one right over there and you you have this moment where he's like 
it's obvious that Superman's not really listening to him or giving him like the benefit of the doubt. That is that's actually pretty good. I I, I like that too because like I think that gives off like how uh, at least at least in this story how I think um Superman could feel like should feel to other people very like my way or the highway um kind of thinking um and it's like I'm doing the I am doing the right thing right now um and I'm like you know I'm trying to say like that kind of mindset. Like yeah yeah you have the, you have two options like maybe you can even synthesize this like there are is like there are two general ideas about Superman's character one you have like this very warm charismatic Superman that is like you know kind and listening um, and a good listener and caring and then you have this other version that is like cold and and weighty and constantly on his high horse and you know is willing to to inflict violence to get what he wants like uh, the best example is uh did you ever want you, you used to watch uh justice league Unlimited, um, right? yes yes do you remember the episode where superman fights shazam oh, yeah because like shazam gets like more popular than superman and lex luther he doesn't even really turn shazam on to superman he just kind of makes some points about like hey superman's not that good of a guy he's kind of a jerk he's kind of a, he's kind of a dick and then he just like kind of gives him a rope and, and watches and watches superman hang himself <laughs> and, then, and then shazam like all like beats the mess out like i just like do you, do you remember that that one scene where like where shazam picks him up and he just like keeps striking him with yeah, the lightning? it's like it's very like it's like hey man hey <laughs> How does it feel? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> like, 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 oh man, it, it feels kind of cathartic to me where it's like, hey, you know, like, yeah. like Superman, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but this is kind of what you do to other people. <laughs> Contrast that with like the death of Superman. And when, whenever I see Superman fight Doomsday, it never feels super satisfying. Mm. Seeing this character that is like just as strong as Superman really crush him yeah and i i I've just i've never seen a scene other than like the shazam versus uh superman fight that's really made me feel like oh this is like this is a real threat like yeah superman might might lose this time yeah well i feel like like a lot of like um with like at least with uh what's it it's not doomsday i keep what's what's that character again bizarro no, the, um the one that uh that we j you just mentioned i'm blinking no, the one that Shazam? no, the one that uh in the death of Superman. Oh, Doomsday! Yeah, oh, I got it right the first time. But yeah, Doomsday. <laughs> um, like Doomsday is normally depicted of kind of like a monster, like like Frankenstein kind of thing. He's he, he, he's seen as more like this uh this animal trying to like destroy Superman. Like he's not a dude that's like saying like pointing out some shit about Superman while he's beating his ass, right? Like, right? Like, uh, I feel like that that character, I think that's what, like, the, the, Shava the Sh Shazam scene, like, does a little bit better, where it's like, hey, this person is not, like, this robot that's just trying to destroy Superman. This person is just another person being like, hey, yo, you kind of suck. And and if you want to stop me, force me, right? And, like, <laughs> and, like, and, like, and, and, and Superman was like, all right, let me show you these hands. And it, it seems like infinity does not work against magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I think it's a, we, we just kind of hit on another issue with, like, Superman is that his none of his, his villains ever really, other than Lex Luthor, really point anything out about or really have anything they really stand for. Like, Doomsday is just, like, this big brute. He's basically Goku. But talks yeah. less. Um, and less fun. Like, Bizarro, Bizarro well, Goku's is just Superman, but but not yeah. smart. Uh, Goku is uh, Goku is, is dumb and lovable. Um, um, Doomsday is dumb and just angry. <laughs> yeah. I, I, just, I remember the, uh, the, um, the, the, what's it called, the Max Landis one, where it's like, yes, yeah, Doomsday is created, he's, he's just a baby that was born, and this, this clone, this scientist was like, I'm gonna clone a baby stronger than Superman, so he just took the baby, and the way he, he decided to make it is he threw the baby, and he hit it up against a rock, he just kept doing it, <laughs> until eventually, he made the super baby. <laughs> he, he dark souls them into a, a, a Superman villain. <laughs> yeah. But like, like, there's like villains like that. There's like the uh, there's like the robot guy that's just like I'm just a robot with kryptonite. And then I don't, I don't even know what. Where's the other one? There's the one where it's like, 
He's like a sledge monster. I forget what his name is. Yeah. He's like kind of like a sledge monster. He's like I'm just a sledge monster. That's that's my yeah. thing. And then like and like even like the the characters that don't like uh, like like attack him like uh like physically like the one that you have to say his name backwards, um, to like defeat or whatever. Um, was uh is that Mister Mixelplay? Yeah, yeah. Um, you have to make him say his name backwards or um to um, make him like disappear. Like it's like he should feel. I feel like he should feel more way more of like a a he should be way more higher in the in the rose gallery but since like they don't do too much with him or like they they feel like they like mr plex is not like just a joker he doesn't care about anything it's like he, he barely kind of cares about the situation too in a way um he's he's literally just a dmt character yeah yeah that is exactly what he is. He's a, he is like a Joe Rogan DMT character. That's, he's like, yeah, I saw these ma- these magical elves that were like flicking me off, and they were spinning around in a ball. Like that is that is literally what Mixelplick is. He's a he's a he's a a, a, a human from the tenth. He's a being from like the tenth yeah. dimension or something. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it, yeah, it's very like, hey, you know, like you sh- you should have more, but like I, I get it, I get why that doesn't happen because like. You know, Superman is not about that. Like, you know, if you're talking about the original Superman, the Superman that's like more people like or whatever, or I think the idea is like Superman is the ideal and it's just um people testing that ideal and like um Superman eventually overcoming it and like not giving himself the excuse or the way out. Yeah, but they test it in terms of strength. Yeah. Like, it's never about that's true. ideology <laughs> except with like Lex Luthor. And even then it's just like Hey, try to beat my robots. Yes. Hey, I'm in a robot suit. I'm not Iron Man. Yeah, like, and he's like, he's like, why are you doing this, Lex Luthor? Because you, I fucking hate you. Like, no, no other reason. <laughs> yeah. Why do I need any other reason? I want to be. I want to be the MC. <laughs> Let me be the MC. <laughs> I deserve this. Oh man. Yeah. But yeah, I think that was. A, I think that was a good episode. Um, I really like your. Uh, yeah, man, you really, you really brought uh, it. Well, I, I really like your. I really, I really fucking dig your, uh, your Superman, bro. Uh, especially since you throw that, uh, that static shock tie, bro. Like, I, 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 I really, I really think your, your, your thing has legs, bro. I really think it could be like a I, series, bro. I think at the end it should be like the end of it should like be. You would be, you would be crazy. Do I do? Do you actually be really what? interesting? If um, if uh, if I change the character, if Alistair. Instead of making him like like Alistair, if I make him into um, if that's j- just turns out to be Virgil's dad, ooh, <laughs> ooh, and it's like in the end, it's like Virgil, him getting his powers is kind of like origin story. He's kind of stopping, um, his dad from I don't know murdering everybody. I don't think that would work because like this is the guy with the nuke and yeah. stuff. I don't, but but that would have been interesting. Or or just in the end, if, if like Static Shock is like, hey, you know, let me stop this thing. Yeah. I don't know if that would work, but I think that would be kind of interesting. Well, I think I, I think I don't know because like Superman doesn't really have his uh has a very Superman uh, Static Shock is like it's very interesting because you know he he know he's closer associated to Gotham and I, I know a lot of Gotham stuff is like closely associated to Metropolis City. Um, he could just be like um one of the low level superheroes that like people actually really like, like like the ones that like actually like has like grass movement like, behind him where it's like. People like this guy because like he stands for morals. Like you know, you know where uh, Static Shock stands. You you don't know where Batman or Superman stands. Yeah. And well, hmm. well, in, in in this case, like I guess I'm th- thinking of like a slightly older uh, Static Shock because like the one in the comics right now is it's pretty young, right? Yeah, he's still in high yeah, school. Yeah. But wasn't he always in high school? Um, yeah, yeah, but like, um, at least in the TV. Yeah, show. In, the, in the TV shows that we're probably the most like familiar with using, but I know there's, um, some other ones where he's like slightly older. Um, in the TV show, they had an episode of of uh, of of um Static meeting a future him, I believe, which is pretty interesting. Mm. But yeah, uh, have you ever had a have you ever had a Static Shock meets Black 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 Lightning? Um, I have I have never seen that. Have you seen that? I that sounds super interesting. That has to be a th- that'd be kind of cool. I, I I think like it has to be a thing. It has to be like you know you know we're not the strongest with our comic book knowledge and and <laughs> thing. We just have to you know just let's let's uh leave a comic <laughs> a comment in a in a uh uh comic historians uh uh thing and be like yo 
is this a thing? And then he will probably respond with like a, 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 a four hour video um, that I will watch all of. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, that was, I think that was a good first episode. Uh, hmm. This is the part of the show where it is the end. <laughs> if anyone's listening to this, uh, what do you think of like, the stories we pitched? Let us know what's your thoughts and maybe things that you would change or add, or maybe even pitch your own stories. Just like write down in comments. Um, I'd love to hear. I'd love to read some more interesting takes of Superman and maybe also throw in like, what is Superman to you? Like, why does Superman work? Why does he doesn't work? <laughs> will you will you join on to my hate trade of Superman? <laughs> if you have any other ideas uh, for things you want us to uh, create pitches for, you know, leave it. Leave a suggestion in. Like the comment section below, you know, we, we have some other ideas. Like I don't know, I, I really want to, I really want to do a a, a Martian Manhunter pitch Ooh. for sure. Ooh, that would be pretty good. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know what 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 kind of what what show would you want to do? Nobody. Um, that's that's interesting. Um, I'd have to think of more and more. Um, I guess like always the cliches. Like you know, I'd like to maybe make a I have a, an idea for Batman that I would like to pitch. But there's there's other stories. I just need to need to write them down. Even and then no no they're not all comic book. You know there's also like manga and uh, anime that I would like to pitch some original ideas and just like general shows. Yeah, thanks for liking the show. Thanks for watching.